This is Nimesh here with the Dave Dream Homes Group and KW Technology Ambassador for Keller Williams Houston Southwest. Uh, today I am going to demonstrate for you the process of a real estate transaction uh, in its entirety uh, in KW Command, uh, specifically focusing on the documents portion. All right, so let's get going. Uh, the, as first and foremost, as in uh, most processes within command, we are going to first add the contact at any given point. So we'll come over to our contact section and get into contacts. And from here at the top right, we'll go ahead and click on add a new contact. Where we'll proceed to enter the contact information. So today we'll enter the ever trusted Mr. Mouse and his wife, Minnie, add the wife there. Okay, once we added the spouse, you're gonna click add on the right-hand side. There we go, and we added Minnie Mouse there, at which point it will make a separate contact card for the spouse, okay? Uh, but the only thing that that contact card is going to have is the spouse's name and the fact that they are uh, in a relationship attached to this original contact. Uh, any other information in, that pertains to the spouse, you will have to go into the spouse's contact card and add at any given point. Okay, so the primary email is mickeym at me.com. Uh, phone number is 281-555-1234. All right, and we're going to tag this as the seller all right they're a seller they're selling their house and we're going to click on add more info okay additional contact information all right preferred contact method email okay and their street address one two three magic kingdom drive Problem here is it's not going to show up in the. Oh, nice. Orlando, Florida. We'll go with that. It is there. All right. Now, right here, you're going to want to click this radio button the same as mailing address. If you would like to use this address and this particular contact um, to send out personalized postcards, okay? Just FYI in campaigns. The radio importance button for that. And then we're going to go to about if there's no one, no social media links we want to put in uh, this place. You would stick in birthdays and home anniversaries. I uh, highly recommend that you do that. Uh, that way you can get them on those smart plans. All right. Uh, their occupation information is right here. If you'd like to put that, it is part of the uh, health score percentage. OK, uh, as well as lead source. All right. And then when you come down to custom, if there's any custom fields, this is where you would stick it in here. All right, we're going to go ahead and create this contact by clicking Create. All right, now Mickey and Minnie are in here now. At which point, at any given point during your transactions, when they're ready to begin a transaction, you will come over to Opportunities here in the left-hand menu, which will open up our opportunities. Now, at this point, we're going to have to create a new opportunity on the top right because it's a brand new transaction. All right, our market center, center information should be there. Uh, if you're on a team, then you would drop down and pick your team name there. Opportunity type is very important. All right, it always defaults to listing, but you need to drop down and choose buyer or landlord or tenant, which would refer to the lease section. Um, otherwise, uh, this is the only field that cannot be edited once you've created the opportunity. So if you accidentally make a mistake and this is a buyer list, this is a buyer opportunity and you left this at listing and you create the opportunity, there's no way for you to go back and change that and edit that. You'd have to just delete, archive this opportunity and you would have to create a new one. So just beware of that when it comes to this field. So this one is a listing, so we're going to remain the same. And uh, I am the owner of this opportunity, so we'll leave that alone as well. Now we come down to the client information. This is where you have to actually type, start typing in the client, and then you have to pick it from the drop down. 
Okay, you cannot just keep continue to type the client. That's why they need to be in your contacts. Once I've got Mickey in here picked from the drop down, and I come over to co-seller, and I drop that down, Mini should be available. The spouse will be available right here, or whoever the uh, buying partner is. So we're going to click on Mini, and we're all set there. Now we have Mickey Mouse listing as the opportunity name. We can come in here and make this the um, address since this is a listing it'll make it a little easier for our MCA's offices all right one two three magic kingdom drive all right custom tags okay if there if there's a way like you see all my neighborhoods here in the uh, um, greater Fort Bend and Houston area uh, you can you know this is what I like doing with my custom opportunity tags but you're more than welcome to tag your opportunities how you wish if you'd like all right, if you know your estimated close date, you can put it in here. This is a listing. Uh, we're just getting started, so we don't actually have an estimated close date, so I will leave that blank for the time being. I will come back and edit once I have a, uh, a more of an idea of when that will be. All right, estimated list price. Okay, so we're going to go in here and say 550000 Okay, and what is your commission rate going to be here? All right, so 3%. Opportunity phase. If you're still just cultivating it, if it's still in a nurture phase, um, you, you know you just had your appointment, then you're going to be in the cultivate stage or before your appointment. Uh, once you move on to the appointment stage, um, then it'll be in the appointments phase. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say we already have received this listing. Okay, so we're going to be in the active phase. Okay, and we're still in pre-listing though. We haven't put it up on the MLS. All right. So let's go ahead and create this opportunity. All right, once we created this opportunity, it is in here. This is your individual opportunity card. And this is where you're going to be to, in each and every one of your transactions, each real estate transaction uh, has one of these uh, opportunity cards. And as you can see along the tabs above, uh, you're going to follow along your transaction uh, utilizing these tabs, okay? Uh, the first tab that we're in now once it's created is the opportunity details. Um, all the information that we've provided earlier is all listed in here. At any given point, across from general information, you can click on the little edit pencil right here. Okay, and you can come back in here and edit or add any other information that you need. All right, estimated close date is still here. Time frame in months. I like to utilize time frame in months as how long is your representation contract for? Okay, so six months is what I'm going to say. And your uh, appointment scheduled. Okay, let's say we scheduled it. It was yesterday. Okay, the 4th of April. And the appointment date, let's just say I just came back from the appointment. And I signed the appointment. I signed the, the listing agreement today at the appointment. So that was going to be April 5th. Now, contract date is your executed contract date. So we do not have that yet. Close date, since we do not have an offer and an executed contract, we do not know yet. So we'll leave that blank as well. We have our price and our commission rate in there. So I'm going to save this. Okay, now the information is in there. Now the top right box is the property address. Okay, so we can uh, stick this in here. We're going to say 123 uh, Magic Kingdom Drive. There we are. Okay, that's Orlando, Florida. That all goes in there. So now your property address, which I think picks it up from Google Maps, is automatically in there now. All right. Now, if you decide to utilize this box, seller's worksheet, you can use it to kind of keep track of all the numbers and whatnot. Okay, you got your buyer's agent commission rate that you're going to offer. Seller's closing cost. What is the approximate and percentage of your seller's closing cost? And then if they have any mortgage balances, okay, and then your prorated taxes and HOA dues, you can stick those all in here and flick on net comparison on a net show net on offer comparison, and it'll kind of give you a uh, net sheet for them um, and their bottom line, uh, what they'll be cashing out at at the end of the transaction. If you'd like, again, a more accurate. Uh, representation of this would probably be better off coming from your lender or the title company. Okay, so we're going to save that. All right, so that takes care of the opportunity details tag uh, tab. 
Uh, just FYI, when we get into the DocuSign portion of this, uh, some of the information that auto populates in DocuSign will be coming from this opportunity details, okay, along with the uh, contact information. So the next tab is seller's profile. I'm not going to get into this too much. It pertains to the actual brand new KW consumer app. Okay, if this client is registered with the app under you, it will show up here. Okay, at which point then you can assign them a particular um, guide as far as the buyers and sellers guide goes. Okay, this the uh, so they can follow along in, in the process. Now the uh, tab after that is documents. All right. So first, we're going to go over the command side of documents. So as you can see, uh, we have entered the documents tab here. And uh, first and foremost, I want to start from the left hand side. Uh, we have a drop down here that says residential. Now, depending on your market center, you may have different drop downs here. You may be able to pick different folders and different lists right here. But the way my market center has it uh, set up is pretty plain and simple, straightforward for the listing side. It already has created a listed folder and an under contract folder. So all the documents that pertain to listed folder are going to be aligned right here under listed. Okay. And all the documents, all the contract documents, which would pertain to under contract, would all be under the under contract folder. Okay. Like the, um, the actual contract one to four here in Texas, the one to four residential contract is in here. Okay. So back to the listed contract. Now we'll get to the actual documents themselves. The first and foremost, what I'd like to point out is a reminder that all these slots here are not the documents themselves. They are actually placeholders where the executed documents are going to be placed. That way, when they go to compliance, compliance knows exactly which document to look for where. Okay. Okay. So there's two types of documents in command. And there's two ways to upload them into the system. Okay. The first type of document is one that comes that is directly on your computer, whether it, you downloaded it from an email or you uh, scanned it in, at which point then it's in a file that's on your computer. And then so now that compliance is directly in command, you can actually just upload that directly to one of these pertaining slots. Okay, the second type of document and probably the more common one is the ones that we're going to pull from DocuSign. Okay, these are going to be the documents that you create in DocuSign and then where you obtain the signatures from. Okay. Now, what's cool about the system is that DocuSign and Command are integrated together to where they are actually attached on the back end. So you're going to be able to pull the documents from your DocuSign room directly into command, and you're not going to have to download them and then turn around and upload them again. Okay. So we're going to show you exactly how to do that. Now, there's two ways to upload these documents into command. Okay. One is the individual document way okay which where you would come find the slot pertaining to the document you're looking to upload okay in this case we have the exclusive right to sell okay which is your listing agreement in the state of texas and you would come over and click on add a file over here where a window would then pop up okay and then you would keep it on the manual radio button. You see that there is a DocuSign radio button right next to it, okay? But you would keep it on the manual radio button. You could either drag that file into this dotted box, or you can click on this dotted box, and then your window will appear from your computer, and you can go and find that document, okay? And you would just attach it, okay? And then you would assign it, all right? And then it attaches to the slot that it pertains to. You would go about and proceed to upload any document you need one at a time, okay? If that is the method in which you need to utilize this. Now, if you came in here and you already had your exclusive right to sell, okay? Your listing agreement, your IABS, your information about brokerage services, or your wire fraud notice, you got them signed all at the same time and you wanted to upload all of them at one time, you can come up here to attach multiple files, okay? And then if, they're, if you're gonna manually add them, then you would keep them on manual and you can drag them into its respective slots or you can click on it again 
and find it, okay? And upload them. And once they're all here, you can click attach and they will be attached to its individual spots, okay? So that would be the method in which you would utilize the manual upload. Now, if you wanted to pull something from DocuSign, okay, you would, after you've already clicked on the black button that said start a transaction, in which then they will make a DocuSign room, okay, for a DocuSign. All right, I'm going to come back to command. You click attach multiple files and you would choose the DocuSign radio button instead, okay? Now you have drop downs. Now what this is doing is it's actually reading all the documents that you have in your DocuSign room, all right? So for IABS here, then you would drop down the menu. It's empty at the moment because I just created the room and so therefore there are no documents in it, okay? But if there were documents in here, you would see those documents listed here. In this case, then you would find the one that says information about brokerage services matching this title, and you would select that, okay? And you would go about and doing that for subsequently all the documents that you're looking to upload at this time from the DocuSign room. And then you would just click attach. When you did that, all the documents would then populate here from your DocuSign room. And once you were ready, to submit all the documents that you had in place for compliance, you would simply come up here and click the submit to the MC, okay, which stands for Market Center, but it will go to uh, whoever your compliance manager is, okay? Once you've done that, okay, the you then you would just come over to the offers tab to then put in your executed offer, at which point your commissions tab would then open up for commissions. This is where the instructional video is going to stop because I am going to separate these now into two additional videos, all right? Uh, first and foremost, if you wanna get to the DocuSign portion now of the training, there will be a DocuSign video, okay? Then which will come back around and show the uploading the documents from DocuSign. Um, so to get the second half of the documents training, which is the DocuSign portion, look for the DocuSign training video. If you want to move further now and go to the commissions tab and how to utilize the offers tab and the commissions tab, which are the two, which are two in one commissions process, look for the commissions tab opportunities training video. Okay. So that's the end of this video, guys. Uh, see you in the other videos. Uh, take care and keep, keep practicing uh, these scenarios. Uh, that way you have them down when we go live um, just around the corner. Take care and enjoy your day.